Thank you, Ron. Thank you. At first, I was like, man, Ron's really harsh. And then I'm like, no, there's some truth behind that. And sometimes we need to be nudged to just start recognizing the reality that simply breath, um, waking up, there's just so many things that we can be super grateful to God for. So thank you, Ron, for leading us in that. It was really good for me. And I'm also recognizing that I am very needy. Uh, I feel very underqualified preaching God's word. And yet, um, it will be an exercise for me to trust for God to speak this morning. And if things that I share aren't of God, uh, just asking for his grace and forgiveness in that. Uh, but we're going to go on a little journey, like I like to take everybody on, and I'll get to use my whiteboard today. And uh, do you ever feel, wait, before I do this, um, I just want to open up in prayer. God, um, we, we come before you. I ask for, for this morning that you would, that you would be speaking uh, to my heart. And uh, you would help me hear you speaking to me, even up here as I'm sharing words out of my mouth. And I ask that you would use these words to speak to the hearts of those here listening, asking that you would not um, deter me uh, for those who aren't here, but for those who are here, that you would speak to our hearts and that you would, um, by your grace and gently, that you just show us some steps to take in our own journey toward being more like you, Jesus. And maybe, maybe for some, it's that just initial step of being like, hey, I want to actually follow you, Jesus. And for others, it might be like, hey, I've been following you, Jesus, for a very long time, and I need yet another reminder of, of who you are and of your goodness. So God, I ask that you'd go before us this morning. Your Spirit, Holy Spirit, asking that you would give us um, your power and your strength to hear and uh, then to change us, because we can't change ourselves on our own. It is by your spirit and by your power. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Do you ever feel like this? <laughs> I have a plan. God says, I have a plan for your life, and but it actually feels like this, little kid. Uh, this is actually how I feel uh, this week. Uh, even even last Sunday, you know, a lot of us were here when Pastor Jared said that God was calling him and his family to uh, to a church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And um, my initial thought was kind of like this. And even even post him making that announcement, just navigating just a lot of themes this week. Uh, but even even for me personally, probably 10, 15 people will coming up and be like, "Well, so are you going to just?" take his role. And there's like this, first of all, I'm, I'm mad at Jared simply because now I'm forced to change. And I don't want to, right? But also, and when I say I'm mad at Jared, I'm, I'm, some of my initial feelings are, are, are sadness, but also I'm really happy for him and his family. And, uh, but this is how I feel. Because sometimes you you think you have a plan, or you think things are just going to just be what they are, and then something happens. Sometimes they're small, sometimes they're big. Um, <laughs> and then somebody uh, just randomly writes notes up here to you to encourage you. So thank you for whoever wrote this note to me. It's, I'll just read it. It says, quote, Jim is cool. So thank you, <laughs> whoever did that. I'm guessing it's Brad, but I don't see him, or he's skirting. Okay, anyhow. Thank you, Brad. Um, but this is how I feel. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Uh, but like I said, for me, just the immediate thing is, is my, my friend um, Jared being called away. And just to, to not, not necessarily to assure you, uh, but it's in these changes in these times where it can be difficult. And here's the beauty, is that with, with Pastor Jared, we get to be with him until December 3rd. And so we might want to make some quick changes or do, but really, until December 3rd, it's going to be this kind of this time frame where we're going to grieve him, but we're also going to celebrate him. And so I want you to be thinking of those things. Like even for, for, for me personally, I 
was starting to recall all these times that my friend Jared had played just small but also big role or big um, things in my life. Uh, and so on December 3rd, I just want to invite everybody to make it a priority to be um, at church on that Sunday, as well as we'll do a gathering afterwards where we're going to just share stories. Uh, we've even opened it up to you can share good things. You can even share some bad things. Um, you know, because here's the, the thing is relationships consist of both. And uh, we really want and we believe uh, that we will be okay without Jared, though we are going to miss him. And so please be a part of that. He's played a huge role in our context for over 12 years. And that is, that's really, that's really amazing. And not only that, but that we get such an extended period of time with him um, as he's going to go. So be ready for that. Uh, December 3rd, we'll have him for next six weeks, as well as we will be grieving together. And in this last week, I've consulted with just a lot of other people who've gone through similar things, both in the, in the church world, but even outside the church world. And there are a lot of themes that have been coming up just in my conversations, and I just want to share them with you so you know what's going on in my heart. Um, just some of those themes, but one of, one of the th themes, and it's funny, is because I had this, um, I have this, it was, it was on my shelf, and I, I, I put it up in a way, and it's been up in a way for a while, but I pulled it out this morning. But I have this little, uh, this little turtle, and a little bit about me, my mother loves turtles, and she's got probably like 500 turtles. Mom, you're probably watching online, here's one of those turtles. But I put it on my shelf, I hadn't seen it for a while, but I, I, I asked her for one of these when I first uh, came back to, to Bismarck Community Church, and the, the reason I wanted it was really, Jim, remember to go slow like a turtle. And so even in the last couple of weeks, um, hearing about, about Jared leaving, the thing that I've been hearing over and over, and it's not just from, um, from my, like the people that I'm consulting, but even from our leadership team, it's this idea of going slow, that we're moving into a discerning period where we're going to sit, wait, grieve, also dream, not in our own power and strength, but in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit, because something is coming, uh, and we want to be a part of something that's coming that is directed by the Spirit and not ourselves. So just this, this theme of going slow and discerning. Uh, a couple other things that came up, and I will even apply it to you because uh, I, I've heard several people say, Jim, what do you want? Personally, Jim, what do you want? And my first thought is, well, I'm a follower of Jesus. I shouldn't want anything because that means I'm selfish. But I've heard over and over, and then I started looking in Scripture where Jesus would go up to people and say, well, what do you want? What do you want me to do? And we have the account where the person's like, I want to be healed. And so the person, was, these people were saying, well, Jim, what do you want? And I'm like, I, I'm not sure yet. And, and also, in that uncertainty, what it's causing me to do is it's causing me to be like, well, let's, I need to spend some time with Jesus so that I know what I want. And so I invite that, that just that theme that's been coming up out to you. What, what, what do you want? Because the reality is that God made us with desire. And desire is really, what do we want? We can want some pretty bad things, but we can also want some really good things. And when we go and spend some time with God, alignment with God's desires will shape our desires. So that theme of desire has been coming up a lot. Also... <laughs> Uh, thanks, Jared. I hope he's watching this because I'm still frustrated. Um, but thanks because what, even with him feeling God's calling away from our context, a question that I've been wrestling with this week, and you may be too, uh, is really this. God, can we trust you? Like, we're losing a pastor of 13 years can we trust that you will guide us? 
And I'm like, no, we can't. Well, like, I want to act as if, like, you know, oh, things aren't going to work out. But the question is, do we believe that God is trustworthy and that God will guide us yet through another thing in our lives? And if we simply just go back, I mean, I'm, I'm 39. If, we go, if I go back the last 39 years of my life, it's like, oh, my goodness. You were faithful. I, can tr- I trust it. Like, we can look back and just see moments of hardship, of difficulty, but where God was with us, with me, um, through that process. So that theme of just trust, trusting God uh, is, is before me, but it's also before you. It's before us. Do we trust that God will guide Bismarck Community Church in whatever is coming next? I believe yes, and I'm also inviting you to join me in that process. Which is a slow one? Which also desires, uh, begs that question, what do we want as we're trusting God in this process? And one of the last things before I jump into um, our text today is this theme of humility. And this has come up over and over. And Pastor Jared will be, be here next week, and I think he'll be preaching on Philippians 2, where it talks about Jesus' humility, where he's emptying himself um, for humanity by dying on the cross. And uh, this theme of humility keeps coming up because sometimes in processes like this, we'll want to offer all the answers, but really all of us are invited to, to seek God humbly, recognizing that we don't have the answers, but in that seeking, believing that God will reveal to us what our next steps are. So, just wanted to share just some things that were happening in my heart this week. Also, uh, there's three books of the Bible that, that, that were just became very evident this week. And it was actually even before Pastor Jared had mentioned that, that he was, um, he had made a des- decision to, to go to Grand Rapids. But the book of James, the book of Proverbs, and the book of Matthew. So I encourage uh, everybody, um, you know, check those out. But even if those aren't what God's leading you to, find some, some of God's word and start spending some time with it because I do wholeheartedly believe that he will speak to you and you are, through the Spirit, you play a role in where we as BCC are going. So if you were here for our, uh, our, our welcome this morning or if you were out in the foyer or if you arrived late, first of all, there's no shame. Um, I, I asked the question, how many cells are in the, hum, on, in the average human body? And Sandy was nice enough to look it up on Google. But, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of ways, you know. But, but how, you know, and, and the reality is, is each of our bodies has about 30 trillion cells. And I've always heard this thing, well, every seven years, all of the cells in your body, like, turn over so that the cells you had seven years ago aren't the same as the ones you have now. And I actually found out this morning that that's not necessarily true, though our bodies turn over about 30 trillion cells every 70 years. And the reality is that we have some cells in our body that turn over every two to five days, but we also have some cells in our body, like some cells in our brain and other places that will never turn over in our lifetime. So I just thought that was fascinating because as uh, we'll be exploring today, just this this theme of change, this theme of process, this theme of learning, we, even when we're not aware of it, our bodies are changing. And that's remarkable. So we're always changing, right? And I think that's, that's, that's pretty neat. And it seems like God made it that way. But we're always changing. I, mean, I think of, of other areas. I think of uh, in relationships. I, I was recalling the relationship that I have with, with, with Chantel. We've been married just now 11 years. And I remember the first date I went on with her. And I've changed from that first date to now, hopefully. And hopefully for the better. I remember our first date, I didn't know how to end the conversation. We were with some people, and some people would say, well, you, you end it by like giving a kiss on the cheek or something. I'm like, 
I don't, I didn't, well, I knew that, but I didn't do that. So I'm like, I don't know how to end this date. So I just went up to her and I remember being like, I gave her a high five. And then I gave the other two people next to me just a high five. And I was like, all right, peace. And I just went out and shut the door. And Chantel recalls that initial date as she thought the date was, went bad. And I'm like, this was awesome, you know? And so, I, you know, any you. But that, that was like, our, I just remember our first encounter, a high five. And I would like to think that over the, the, from that point forward that I've changed a little bit. I even think intellectually, you know, we change. We grow in knowledge and ideas. Uh, I think spiritually, we change. Uh, I, I was even thinking like financially, like there's changes that happen in our financial capital um, that, that forces us to change or maybe we're willingly um, change. But there's all these different areas where we're changing. And, and I think really what the uh, change is a good thing. But where I think the, the problem is, is when we're not aware of the good thing of change. Uh, and another thing is, not only are we, we changing, but I also believe that, that God created us with the ability to learn. And learning is really an idea of like changing. But we, we are lifelong learners, which is a good thing. But when we're not aware of our lifelong learning ability, the problem is of who or of what are we lifelong learners of? And so this morning, the passage that we're going to be looking at is in Mark 1. So if you've got your Bibles, open it up. If you've got it digitally, open it up. Just get to Mark 1. Because we're going to be in Mark 1 for this morning. But this, with my, 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 what I'm going to share this morning is what I would say is, is the solution for the problems of not being aware of changes happening in our life, but also the solution of who or what are we a lifelong learners of. So we're going to be in Mark 1, so please, please, please turn there. And this solution is a simple, humble framework, I believe, to navigating change and learning. And what I think it will do is that it will allow us as a community, it will allow us individually to embrace a learning lifestyle. I also think it will allow us to recognize opportunities for growth. And then I also think it will help us realize that we are a people who are in a process. And so I'm going to share this, this framework. So if you would, um, the framework is found in Mark chapter 1. It'll be in verses 14 and 15. And it's at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And it'll be on the screen too, I believe. It says this. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let's read that again. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. I believe right at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he gave us a framework for how to navigate change and how to navigate learning and lifelong learning. And so I brought my, my nice little board up here this morning, and I hope this works out. Hopefully everybody can see it. Let's just call this you or me. All right. All right. And can everybody see that? Raise your hand or thumbs up if you can see it. All right. Can you see it back there, Mary? Okay, sweet. And so this is life. We're just going. All right. And we're living our life. And then something happens. Boop. 
and just for sake of simplicity, I'm going to just call this an event. And so, in, in our context, a big event has happened recently, and I will just say, Jared saying, hey, res resigning soon, and then um, we'll also be taking a call into uh, another church in, um, in Grand Rapids. This is a big moment, and oftentimes, I mean, this is our context moment right now. Uh, we, we experience these personally, we experience them communally. Um, I'll share one for that Chantel and I experienced recently, and I'll just write Caleb, uh, our little boy who's almost six months old. That was a big one. But even before that, we had a little girl who didn't make it out of the womb, Tova. Two big events. One could be deemed as good, one could be deemed as, as not so good. But we have these big events that happen in our lives. And often, what we want to do is that we just want to be like, oh, nope, that didn't happen. I just want to keep, I want to keep on keeping on. I don't know about you, but when, when COVID hit, I just, I, I heard that. Let's just go back to the way things were. Or I just want to keep moving. I just want, but what, with these big events or small events, could, you know, or small, they can be positive, they can be negative. But what these events do is they give us opportunities for change. We can be willing in that, that opportunity for change, or we can be not so willing in that opportunity for change. And I believe, I'm going to give you just a, a simple framework based off of Mark 1, where I believe we can see Mark run, 1 playing out in opportunities for change that are before us. So I want to call... Um, this, this X right here, just a big event. And so when a big event happens, we could want to just keep going this way, but what it actually forces us to do is to maybe go on a journey. And I'm just going to, it's going to look like a little circle, just like that. And the journey at the, its simplest form is really going to be this. This side is repent. Okay, and don't worry, you might be like, well, what does that word mean? I'll explain that. And this side is believe. All right? This side. What is God saying to me? To us? To you? Okay? This side. What am I going to do about it? Do about it. Sorry for my handwriting. What are you, what are we going to do about it? And so when these big events happen, it can propel us onto what we call, you know, I call the learning circle or the circle of change. But what is God saying to us? And then what are we going to do about it? And so even right now in our context, we have this thing before us with Pastor Jared's big event, other things in our lives personally where we can go on this journey of repentance and belief. And so I, I just want to look back at our, our Mark 1 passage, and I just want to share a couple things of what some of these words mean. So in verse 15 or 14, it says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. And he's saying... The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And so when I was wrestling with this, I was like, well, what is the gospel? What is the kingdom of God? I'll just write K-O-G. What does repent mean? What does believe mean? I don't know if you're in similar boats uh, with me, but those are the, the, the four areas that, that stuck out to me. And I believe that Jesus gives us a framework. And so even while I'm sharing this framework, the idea is that over the next six weeks and beyond, it will give you a framework for you personally to go before Jesus talking with him 
and then hearing his voice, but even collectively for us together to go before Jesus, talking with, with God, and then giving us some steps to move. And so, uh, real quick, the kingdom of God, I, I love these, uh, these definitions of the kingdom of God. I, as usual, I, I'm really influenced by um, a philosopher, Christian, uh, his name is Dallas Willard, and he just says the kingdom of God is God's reigning. All right, so the kingdom of God. So when it says Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God, and then he says, and the kingdom of God is at hand, he's saying God's reigning abilities are at hand. So that they're right in front of us, able for us to respond to those things right in front of us. Uh, what does repent mean? Sometimes we might think of like just somebody on the side of the road holding the repent sign, and we're like, man, you know, we, have, we might have negative thoughts or feelings being like, there's, there's like just not a graciousness to it. But repenting, yes, it's turning away um, from, from things that, that might not be of God through God's power and strength for us to do that. But repenting is really rethinking the things that we're thinking about. So oftentimes we might think, well, I make the best decisions. Repentance or turning from that would be like, well, maybe I don't. Actually, God does, so I'm going to cling to that. So repentance is rethinking our thinking so as to change. But then what is belief? And I love this, this, this um, definition of belief. It says, confidence grounded in reality of God and trusting in Him. So when we're repenting, we're rethinking our thinking because we want it to be in line with God's. Do you see this, how this, this can change us? If we were to just keep on this journey and not go on a journey of repentance and belief how God, how Jesus uh, designed it, but when we go on this journey of repenting, we'll be like, well, what is God saying to me? What is God saying to us? What is God saying to you? And then we can respond in belief with confidence that God has spoken to us and that we can move in that confidence because we believe God is trustworthy. But what are we going to do about it? And so we can believe. And so it's in this journey that we are changed. And when we are changed, it takes us on a different trajectory. Right? And sometimes in that trajectory, you might not have expected it. Like, I never thought this was going to happen. I mean, for the sake of my story, I never thought I was going to live in Bismarck. And through a series of events of God changing me, speaking to Chantel and I, and then us responding, we're in Bismarck. But God offers these invitations, and it's not just once, but it's over and over and over, where we are, because we are created to change, we have these opportunities to be aware of them, to constantly change. And I, um, I like to think of like a, a little slinky. This is like our life, right? All right? And I used to have a bigger slinky, and I used to think of like a big slinky as like God's story from the, like the beginning to the end. And then, you know, there's these big things that God is doing, and it's fully going to culminate when he returns or, um, um, or we die. You know, like, but this big story is playing out. But then I was thinking, like, a little story. Like, this is our story. Like, here's one time when there's an opportunity to change, and God changed me whether I was aware of it or not. And so we start seeing that all of that is connected as one story, but we have these opportunities over our whole life for opportunities to change. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, so... I want to just point out just a couple things, and like I said, I felt compelled by the Spirit to just speak on this week, this week to giving us a framework for navigating change in our context and navigating change um, personally. But when we go on this journey, there's just a couple things that can help in this process. First, we observe we observe something. Like, I observe that Jared is leaving. I observe that. 
Then I reflect on this observation. And so observe is really being aware. But I reflect on this, like on this observation. Like I am going to spend some time reflecting on grieving, being in a, in a process um, that might take a little bit of time. And this might take our context a while. But we observe something, we reflect on it, then we begin to discuss it with others. So even as, as Ron mentioned, on Wednesdays, we are committed to gather, we were already committed to gathering and praying on Wednesday nights, and we're going to keep doing that as, 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 as our community to discuss so that we can hear what God might be saying to us, not just individually, but corporately for the next steps. So we observe, we reflect, and we discuss. Remember, this is all, what is God saying to me? What is God saying to us? But then there's a time where you can, you can repent, and that could be the end of it. But then there's a time where we need to take a step, and that's the belief part. And remember the, the definition I shared, that belief is taking steps confidently, trusting God in that process. But in doing that, you've got to come up with a plan, got to get other people involved, accountability, and then we get to act. And guess what? In that acting, we might take the wrong steps. But guess what? We can go around this journey again because we are constantly changing. And, and some people, it, it would be a tragic thing if our thoughts of repenting and believing and following Jesus was just one time in our life. But be, Right. But it's, the reality is that this is every day we have opportunities for change that we can be aware of that the Spirit is doing within us individually, corporately, and so let's go on that journey together, and here is a framework for us to do that. This isn't, you know, there's lots of different change frameworks, but the beauty is I think we can see it right in Jesus' starting of his ministry that is continued to this day of um, repenting and believing, and I even think it's fascinating because he says repenting and believing in what? In the gospel, and you've got to imagine that as Jesus in his story, first of all, he hasn't died yet. He hasn't been buried. And he hasn't risen yet at the point in this story from his perspective. We look at it. We know that Jesus has died, was buried in the ground for three days. He did come back from life and then reigned and revealed and showed himself to a bunch of people. And then he's ascended in at the right hand of God right now. That's what we believe and we believe that's good news and what we would call the gospel because one day he will return, where I even think of like in Revelation 21 where it says there will be a day where there will be no more tears. That's what we are looking forward to, and we are trusting that Jesus will do that. So even right now when you wonder, well, what's the gospel? What's that good news? It's that good news that Jesus fulfills our desires, that Jesus is trustworthy, that he's wise, that in the grand scheme of things for our lives, like I, like I said, I've been here for 39 years, but in the grand scheme of things, there's a bigger story at play in recognizing that there is that bigger story. So we can go slow in the process, all right? We can go slow, and we can do it in humility, and we can do it together. So here's just a couple ideas um, that I wanted to share this morning, giving you, giving me, giving us a framework as we move forward, especially in light of stuff with Pastor Jared. I, 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 like Ron said, we invite you to join us on Wednesdays to earnestly seek God's face. I know if you've got something else going on or if something comes up, but also we need your voice there, even if you're just there listening. We need your voice and your presence there. And it's just for a short period of time, and it might be uncomfortable. But I'm going to throw the invite out there. Please be there because we want to hear your voice, what God is speaking and saying to you, because it might be a part of this process of where um, God changes us as a community. So join us on Wednesdays for prayer and fasting. And even, even with the fasting component, we're fasting on Wednesdays. And then we gather together at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, and we break our food fast together. If you need to, yeah, we'd love for you to join us in that. Also, uh, as 
Ron mentioned, you got your prayer request cards. Get a prayer request on there because we're committed in making um, speaking to God the forefront of any things we do. So please put a prayer request on there. Help us um, and join us in, in being a, a praying people. And then uh, a final thing, because sometimes you'd be like, well, who do we talk to for leading or the next steps? Well, first of all, you can, you're more than welcome to come talk with me. Uh, we have, uh, you know, you can talk to any of the staff members, but you, I really want to point you to our leadership team, our elders and our deacons, and those consist of Nathaniel, he's right there, Tony, who's right there, Mark, I don't know if he's here today, Elijah, and then my fifth one is Daniel. Is Daniel here today? No? So, but there's the five elders and our deacons, Sarah, Tom, and Terry. They're all here today. Uh, and, and, and here's just another um, plug is talk with them. Share concerns, ideas, dreams, whatnot, but also gather with us on Wednesday uh, because we want to start bringing what God is saying to us collectively together so that we can hear um, and then uh, just another important thing, we, um, for having a full leadership team, we still need two deacons. So if um, you know somebody, and really if you're wondering what a deacon is, a deacon is somebody who serves people. And if you know somebody who does that well and you want to suggest or nominate them, please let me or one of the leadership team know because we'd love to get um, some deacons um, so we have a full leadership team. So that's all I actually have for this morning. And so I'm going to invite our music team back up. And as they're coming up, I will pray. But I'll also point out, I, I had Brad change his music list. And I, I asked him to play this song. And um, in light of our, our Mark 1 passage, the reality is that with Jesus, we have everything we need. There's an opportunity to say amen. With, <laughs> with Jesus, we have everything we need. Yeah, and that is truth. And that is reality. Even if it feels weird saying amen, I don't care. It is the reality of, of, of life. And when we're aware that we get to interact and walk step by step with a God who's, who's with us. There is something beautiful about that. And it's an invitation of, of asking, God, what are you saying to me? And then not only that, but help me take steps in what we're going to do about it. Because I can't do it in my own power and strength. I can do it in your power and strength. And so I asked Brad to, uh, to play this song because there's something, it just came to, to my heart this week. And so uh, as as we, we close our time together today, do you want to invite the little ones up? Yep, we do. Yeah. If we got any little ones, come on up and get your music makers.